Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Good morning, everybody. Good to see y'all here in the house of the Lord today. I'm, I'm just, I'm just glad to be seen today. Amen. Praise God, we have a good crowd today, and God has got something mighty good in store for us today through the scriptures, through His Word. Today's topic is going to be overcomer. Before we all leave today, I want all of us to be overcomers. And, and, and know what your purpose is and know why you're an overcomer. Amen. I've got, um, we're going to spend three Sundays on overcomer. I've got one series today and then next week I do a second one and the third one we'll close it out. But it is so good. I got so blessed in the middle of studying this. And I said, you know what? Before we can become an overcomer, we need to know what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. He has gone in this world and he has, he has won the battle in this world. So that gives us to our, our ability to be an overcomer because of what Christ has done for us. And I thank God every day that I'm able to wake up in the morning and thank my Lord and Savior for going to the cross and loving me and loving you. And I think everybody agreed on that today. I got a few prayer requests right here today. And the first one is I want to pray for lost souls, that they will find the Lord. I want to pray for the body of Christ. That's all his believers, that uh, we will be strengthened through his word today and that he will bless us with all our needs. I want to pray for Grace Ministries. And that's everything that's going on, every ministry, everything. I want to pray for God to bless that, to continue to bless it, and to continue to uh, use His people to grow this ministry. I want to pray for the addicted. I want to pray for the homeless that's in our county, our town, and throughout the world. I want to pray for the sick and shut in that's not here today due to sickness or whatever issues going on. I definitely want to pray for... Ann Grant, she's the leader and director of ARC because she, like uh, like our brother said this morning, she's got a big responsibility at the men's house. And thank God that she is put in that spot and God is using her to run that uh, place. And we don't thank the guys that's in the ARC for coming out and supporting us. And it's a blessing to see people getting involved. And, of course, thank God for all of y'all here today as well. We want to pray for my mom as she continues to recover and ask God to give her the strength to face every day. We want to pray for our world, not only our world, but we want to pray for our leaders in our world. We definitely want to pray for uh, our youth, not only in our city, our town, but throughout the whole world. Our youth is coming up in a time where it's very easy to not know who Christ is. There's so many things out here waiting to grab the youth and pull them away from Christ and try to deafen them through all the material things of the world. So we definitely want to pray for our youth. We pray today that we would have youth to get involved. We pray that families would bring their youth to get them in church and, and just use our lives to go out and reach people that's not going to church and say, hey, I know a little place over there that you can go to church. You won't be judged, but you'll be loved. Amen. So today, I want to pray for all of us to be an overcomer. And I pray after this uh, series right here that all of us will understand that we don't need to sweat the small stuff. We don't have to uh, be frightened in a trial, but we know one who is going to get us through that trial, and that's Jesus Christ. So with that said, I have Bobby to come up here and uh, do the announcements. And I wanted to say, I think we got a singer today, right? Bernard, y'all going to do a song? Okay. Well, thank God for that, and thank God that we're going to hear the piano this morning. And I just love hearing that piano, and thank God that Rebecca had wanted to hit them keys this morning. Amen. Doug, we want you to sing something too now. Don't you think you'll sneak out of here singing one day? Y'all remember when we did our revival, Amazing Love, 3 -0? Oh, Doug was one of our singers, and I left to hear him sing one Sunday morning. Um, 
Uh, you got birthdays coming up. Uh, it's a paper right there beside Nadine. If y'all will, please fill that out so we can acknowledge your birthdays and stuff. I know y'all, I know. Let's go on and get it over with. I think it's uh, our buddy and Steve's coming up, right? Anybody else is this week? Marie? Who else? Dylan, he ain't here for us to acknowledge, so he may have laid out for that reason, but we will get him next week. The temp. All right, we're gonna let's let's do Buddy and Steve just for now. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all join in. Y'all want me to hold the microphone close or not? Uh, <laughs> are y'all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Buddy and Steve. Happy birthday to you. Oh, no. Well, listen, y'all, make sure y'all fill that out so we can acknowledge your birthdays and stuff. Uh, for my kids, sixth grade and up, which I think Madison and Dakota and Sissy, I believe, are falling to this. They're having D now. Um, it's a bunch of churches get together, and they bring the youth, and they just focus on the youth for a weekend. That's December the 14th, 15th. I'll get up with you and at the church about that. Um I want to acknowledge the, the pretty flowers of uh, on the piano. It was donated by Marie's mama. Thank you. I meant April. April the 14th, 15th. Did I say December? I, I mean, if y'all can see in this mind, you'll see why I mess up sometimes. Uh, y'all can see we got a, a, a giveaway March the 11th. It's uh, Danny Lewis Bird at the D&J. We're going to be packing Thursday evening. Um Mostly what we are packing for is to give out on the 18th at New Sandy Creek, okay? Uh, March 11 will be a drive through but we will pack masks and the wet wipes and stuff like that. Um, for those of y'all partic participated in Oxford, they went real smooth. We, we working out a few little kinks, so this will go even smoother. So if you can help out with that, that'd be great. Also, on Thursday nights, um, 6.30 to 7.30, Blanca is teaching Spanish. If you don't want to learn how to speak Spanish, you speak uh, teaching Spanish over there on Thursday evenings. Um, like I said, we have the kids tomorrow evening start at 6 to 7.30. Thanks for all the help that's been coming in on that. Uh, all right, last night we had a meeting with uh, Christ Alone Outreach, and we're getting ready to start some more ministries, which we had talked about in January. One ministry is a feminine product ministry, for the schools and stuff, okay? So if y'all can bring in stuff for the, the girls would need, um, the lady had brought it up in January, and I ain't think a lot about it, and I seen it on TV, and the woman was uh, on TV talking about it, and a lot of kids and parents don't have the money to, to buy female products, and so they lay out of school, and stuff like that. So if y'all start bringing it in, we're stored in this room. Um, also, uh, children's underwear like kindergarten through fifth grade. They, it's a big need for that, okay? If y'all can bring that in. Um, also, it'll be food, but we need to get a list of what we need because most of what we're trying to target is homeless people living in hotels, and all they got to cook with is a microwave, so it's got to have to be microwavable to heat up and stuff. Um, but like I said, y'all, we'll start bringing in products for that. For the And I told the women last night, I said, I'd do anything in the world for the Lord. I said, I even took them boxes in that school, but they're going to be camouflaged, okay? It's going to be like plastic ingenuity or something. It ain't going to be there on tampons or something like that, you know. I, I draw my line right there, but I will tote it, but it will be camouflaged. Go ahead, buddy. I know you want to say something. I... I and all the years I've been married, I went to the store one time to get that product, and I made sure that my wife knew from that day forward never to run out again. Never. Um, but like I said, with that being said, you know, like I said, but y'all be in prayer for that. Like I said, it is a big need. Uh, this lady on TV was talking about this 20, 30 girls, and, and we're talking about from elementary up, like third, fourth grade up, you know. Um, and it's a big need. And what we're going to try to do is maybe 
we as a church will maybe help support like Pinkston Street, which is right around the block, a couple blocks, and maybe the school down here by the underpass. And then other churches to take on other uh, schools and stuff. So be in prayer for that and help support that. Um, there is a, let's see, there's a women's conference going to be at Russian Water April the 29th. Uh, Lynn Cooper's doing it. It's called Rise Ups Women's Conference. If y'all want to attend that, um, I'll post it on the board. Also, I got some of these flyers back there by the prayer box. It's for New Sandy Creek, uh, the 18th. Uh, if you got anything you like to donate, uh, anything, like I said, in good shape, they're trying to give it a, open it up to the community to give out. And so we're going to also give out supplies during that time, too. Um, also, let me see, we had a lot we were talking about. Um, you know, we talked about doing our event April the 15th. We're going to do it in the evening because I think it's uh, the spectacular or something. There's different things going on, but we're going to try to do it in the evening. And it may be like a meet and greet. And we're going to try to put the word out that we all raising fe feminine products, that we all doing stuff for uh, kids, underwear, or stuff like that, kids clothing, um, and maybe food. And we're going to do like the um, state fair when you bring product in. You get free admission, so we're going to give them a ticket that they can get a box of supplies. And then we're going to try to have our Easter egg hunt and all that that evening. And um, I may try to get some people lined up to sing that evening, too. And just and, just, and we're going to cook and feed them. You know, we don't want just people to run in and run out. We want to kind of make try to have something here to make them stay for a little while, okay? So we'll probably reach out to some and try to get them to sing for us that night. That's uh, April the 15th in the evening. Um also, April 15th in the morning, we've had a lot of families come through uh, the toy drive and we got their information, but we sometimes we get so busy, it's hard for us to follow up on these people. So we're going to take that morning and hope we can get a bunch of people together and everybody get three or four names and go visit the people that come through on the toy drive. And let's go out, pray with them, see how they're doing, let them know what we're doing that evening. But we want to just do a follow up, okay? Because, you know, and just let them know that we care. Um, if we also, the 28th, uh, if, if you like to participate in this, this is for volunteers. If you ain't been volunteer, but you've been praying for us or whatever, we're going to go down to Lake Gaston at Brenda Bigler's house and we're going to have a cookout and we're going to have desserts and just socialize. You know, it's not a work day. It's we just going to socialize, have fun, and enjoy each other's company. Um, I made the comment last night. So I had the man to move all the stones away from the front of the, the building, so this won't happen. But I made the comment last night since women messed it up in eating, right? Right? Let's, ain't nobody agree with me with that? Y'all scared? <laughs> so y'all can cook us desserts and make up for it, okay? So, but, uh, but no, we know... Uh, Adam was at fault too. But like I said, y'all keep that in your mind. Like I said, we got the kids, uh, D uh the feminine ministry, the, the children's clothing ministry, stuff like that. Uh, you know, just think about it. I don't know. I, I remember John. He Y'all heard John's testimony. John at one point was homeless living in a car. I have been blessed in my life that I never had to be homeless. I've never had to miss a meal you know, or live in the cold or stuff like that, but I can't imagine what it's like. But there is a lot of people, like I said, it's kids going through it, and with no fault of their own, it's just the circumstances they're brought up in that they're in it. So let's do what we can do to reach out. Like I said, get you some of these flyers for New Sandy Creek pass out. Um, it's going to be an indoor giveaway. They want as many people as they can to come and get stuff. We're going to give them supplies got the women's conference coming up like i said we got a lot of stuff going on um and also one more thing we was talking about doing is uh a community garden so if anybody likes to grow stuff see shannon jamie i think wants to get in on that we're gonna plant a garden over there so uh i i, I do the eating in the garden but my, my my daddy broke me from like raking roots and sticks but I, I know just as soon as that ground broke up, I'll be the first one at that picking up rocks and whatever we got to do. But, um, but yeah, we got several ministries going uh, that we're going to get started. And uh, like I said, get involved. Like I said, you don't have to be present and be involved. You can support it, bring in products, pray for it. That's the biggest thing. But 
if if any way possible, if you can go Saturday, we're gonna try to leave here about 20 minutes to nine. We take the bus down to Lewisburg. We're gonna have it set up. Um, get involved, y'all. This, this the people that come in, they have a ball. You know, they the people you pray with, the people you get a product to, they are so thankful. You know, it is it's just a blessing, Shannon. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. All right, if you like to learn sign language, that's Wednesday nights at what time? All right, as soon as we find out definite, if you would like to learn how to do sign language, you know, we'll let you know on that. But like I said, that, the whole idea is to is for us to connect with other churches. And if you got a free time, there's something you can do besides sit at home, watch TV or whatever. Um, you know what boredom leads to, a lot of y'all do. So, you know, just stay, stay busy. Pray for those people at home. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna. Uh, Karen had brought this up. Karen Short had brought this up. And what we're gonna do this Saturday is we're gonna have everybody. We're gonna have people pray with them, right, when they come up. But we're gonna give them a card and an ink pen while they're waiting in line that they can fill out that prayer request and the name and phone number. And we're gonna put it in a box. And then after that, we're gonna get up with the churches. We may have people that say, "Look, I can pray for somebody, but I can't do the other stuff." So they can take a handful of cards and call this person and say, hey, uh, you come through the giveaway. You had a prayer concern. I just want to touch base with you, see how you're doing. Can I pray with you again? You know, and follow up with them, okay? We want we want more follow-through instead of just give, 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 okay? Because like I said, that follow-through is where the seed is really going to be sown at right now. Anybody else got anything they like to comment on or add? At D&J Auto. It's on 401, and while you turn, I think, it's, is it 96, y'all? 401, 96, right down the corner, 56. So it's right down the corner. It's a, it's a good location. Uh, and like I said, we planned on last time we took a, a flatbed truck, a rollback with, uh, what was it, 13 pallets, Ricky. So we can put 14 pallets on that. We can put 14 pallets on that gooseneck trailer. Uh, my truck will haul some. So everything will be given out in full cases. And now we brought that up. We got a track trailer load coming Tuesday. We didn't get none this week because of some mix up on the paperwork. But Tuesday, we got a full truckload of Arm and Hammer disinfectant wipes. Now, I don't know if it's going to be like the bottom whole layer, like 26 pallets, or it's going to be double stacked and maybe 50 pallets of Arm and Hammer. And it retails for, they sent a picture of it, retails like $30. So I'm imagining it's something like the Mr. Clean, you know, the little cases. Um, so we'll have that. And then we have an, another truck coming in Thursday with the regular product. So um, please continue to get the stuff, continue to give it out, use it as a tool, um, tell people about Christ, that you love them, you care about them, stuff like that. Thank you all. Y'all thought I was going to play, didn't you? Yeah. We're getting ready to hear it in a few minutes. All right, y'all. We're going to go on and get uh, our offering done, and then we're going to go into our praise and worship, and we've got some songs that we want to play this morning. So it's so good to have people eager to do stuff for the Lord. If it's nothing but a piano, it's nothing but using your mouth or picking up a piece of trash or, or whatever it is for the Lord, you know, we are very grateful. For that today that people are so blessed that they're able to give God glory through whatever their talent is. So if we can get two youth to come up here and do the offering. Yes. I'd like to uh, the song I'm gonna play this morning is It Is Well with My Soul. I'd like to just read the lyrics so that the congregants can focus on what it means. Okay. All right. So it's crazy. I chose this song because there's a lot going on in my life and it is just well with my soul. Come what may. Right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the life that we lead as Christians. 
And this song was written in the early 1800s, which just speaks to my soul because our brothers and sisters back then struggle with the same thing we struggle with now. Mm -hmm. It says... Dear Father God, Lord, we just come to you today and we, we thank you and we honor you here today in your house. And Lord, as we pass this offering, we know it may be somebody that does not have to give. But Lord, we pray that, that, that you will continue to have them come here and sit under your word. And Lord, we just thank you for the ones that can give. But Lord, this is a house for you. We come here, Lord, to give you ourselves. And to give you reference and to give you glory, Lord, through our lives. And we just thank you so much for this privilege to be in your house for another day. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Didn't that sound good this morning? Thank you, Rebecca, for that beautiful music. That's what I'm talking about. It's nothing like hearing a piano. It's nothing like hearing them old hymns that the world has forgot about. I love uh, contemporary music. I love the new style of music. I love anything that has Jesus' name in it. Amen. But I do miss those old hymns that we used to sing as a child with our grandparents and what a, what a wonderful memory that used to be. I remember back in the day that they didn't have all these speakers and they didn't have TV screens. It was just a preacher preaching and, and, the, and the choir singing out loud. And what a wonderful day that was and what a wonderful day this is today. So we're going to open this altar up here today. And if you're here today and if you're broken, if you just need prayer today, please come up here. If you're here today and... You say, Lord, I just want to come up here and praise you for what you've done for me this week, God. So I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I want to go on and let Bernard and them come up here and do that song. I almost forgot, brother. Y'all had to forgive me. I get excited when I get in that word. <laughs> We want to be in the service of the Lord. It ain't about the performance. It's about the spirit of the whole God's Holy Spirit that dwells here today to touch us, to move us, to stir us up. You know, praises, the Bible say when praises goes up, 
blessings come down. And, and, and one of the blessings that I always come to receive is what flows out of the man of God mouth. Because my pastor is real. He don't play. Our Sunday school teachers real. They don't play. They give you the word. And I, I'm so thankful, man. I'll be busting out with joy every Sunday trying to rush and get here. I don't want to be late. You know, uh, the song the, the song we're about to do is a story song. And Pastor hit it dead on the head when he said that Christ died for us. But most of us don't understand what he went through before he gave up his spirit and died. So that's what we come to tell y'all today. If you will, I want you to picture with me a little boy walking down a dirt road in Georgia. In his hand, he had a cage of wild birds. And he met a man down the same dirt road. And the man asked the little boy, he says, son, what do you have there? He says, I got a cage of wild birds. He said, what are you going to do with them, son? He said, I'm going to take them. I'm going to play with them. And I'm going to kill every last one of them. But the man had compassion for the birds in the cage. He asked the little boy, he said, son, what would you take for him? The little boy thought for a moment. He said, well, sir, I'm going to charge you $2 a piece. The man reached into his pocket and paid the little boy for every bird that was in the cage. Not only that, he paid for the cage that the wild birds was in. He took the cage of birds on the outskirts of town and set it on a little hill. He opened the door to the cage, but not one bird would fly free. Just like we have been captured in this world of sin. Fancy and shiny things just holding us in. But the man reached inside the cage and he took every bird out one by one. He says, Birdie, I paid for you to be free. If you will, picture with me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus met Satan down this same dirt road. And he asked him, Satan, what do you have there? Satan say, oh, I got a world full of sinners and backsliders and whoremongers and robbers and thieves and liars. And Jesus said, what are you going to do with them? Satan said, well, I'm going to take them. I'm going to fill them full of this world. And then I'm going to kill every last one of them. But Jesus had compassion for you and me. He said, Satan, what would you take from them? What would be your price? The devil got angry with Jesus. He said, I tell you, if you want them, the price is going to be high. It's going to take your sweat. It's going to take your tears. Matter of fact, Jesus, it's going to take your natural life. But Jesus says unto you and unto me that he paid the price for us to be free. He said, I was wounded on my head with a thorny crown and blood came running down my face for the evil way that we think towards one another. He said, they stretched me wide and they nailed my hands to that old rugged cross for the evil way that you now want to fight one another. Jesus said he took his feet. They nailed it to the cross of Calvary. He said, that's for the evil way that you walk over the needy and the poor. They even took a spear and they stuck Jesus in the side. He said, blood and water came from my body for the impeccable thing we have in our body called us. Jesus says today to you and to me that he paid the price for you to be free. The Bible says those of us that have the son is set free indeed. Thank you very much.
We've been blessed already, haven't we? Amen. Amen. Let's give them another hand clap, y'all. That has set the tone for today's message. I think about an overcomer. If you're here today and you ask yourself, what is an overcomer? An overcomer is somebody that can get through the worst thing in their life and talk about it and still praise God. Amen. See, a lot of us don't understand that when we go through a trial and go through things of this life, that we think we have to go through it by ourselves and there's nobody there to help us, but that's where we're wrong here today. I don't care what you're going through in this world or what you went through last week or what's going on in your life. Christ has never left you. He's always there. It's us that pull away from Him. I think back in my drug addiction years ago, and thank God today I can say years ago because it's been a little over 12 years. At one point in my life, thank you, I didn't know what it was to be an overcomer. And when I found Christ, I realized what an overcomer really is. Because I bet it my mind on the cross and I saw the bloodstains of what Jesus Christ died. I think about His life on the cross where He gave His life and, and paid the price for my drug addict life. As bad as that may sound, you may be here today and say, well, how can Jesus die for me after what I've done? But He has died for you. He has died for the whole world. Whoever will call upon His name shall be saved here today. If you're not an overcomer today, find Jesus and look at the purpose of his life for yours. And then you will see an illustration that you've never seen before. It's a wonderful thing to see the cross and what the cross represents. We live our lives like we want to and things happen and we want to give up. That's not an overcomer. An overcomer is somebody who embeds their trust into the Lord Jesus Christ and gives them their whole life. I heard a man talking last night. He says, we all have a house that we do. We all have a house. But in that house, we have a room that we don't want Jesus to come in. Maybe somebody here today, maybe you have a place in your house where you're not inviting Jesus. In other words, you're not saying, Jesus, here's my room. I give you this room so that I can not be bounded to Satan, but I can be in reality and be in tune to you. See, when we hold on to things of this world, if we do things that's not pleasing, but if we don't repent, we don't turn away, and we just hold on to them because somewhere you don't want to get rid of that because it's a lust that you have become to enjoy. But it's a time in life before that you can become an overcomer. You have to give up that room that you're holding on. You have to say, Jesus, my life, it's in shambles. My life is unmanageable. My life is no good anymore. I give you this right here because this is what Satan has used to hold the reins on. So I want you to understand today that whatever you've got in your life, if you can't give it up to Christ, Satan uses that to bind you today. He bounds you today. It's like a horse. You take a little bitty bit and you put it in a big horse's mouth. That little bit can make that horse do whatever you want to do by pulling on them reins. And I think about Satan. All he needs is that little bitty bit that's, that's wedged in your heart that you won't give to Christ. And he can take those reins and he can pull you wherever you want to go, wherever he thinks he wants to do. So today, have you got Jesus Christ's reins on you? Or do you still have the bindness of Satan holding you on? Amen? I want to tell you that before we get in this, because there's a lot of ways to be an overcomer. Some baseball players use their talent to hit home runs, and they, they become noticed as an overcomer in baseball because they're so good with their talent. And I think about us. Jesus Christ has given us all the tools that all of us need today. It's not an excuse that we have to lay down and be in mourning. It's no excuse that we have to have a frown and be miserable and depression. All of that is an act of Satan here today. Christ has given all of us a reason to be thankful and happy today. He has given us those tools and are you using those tools? 
Do you really know what Christ has done in your life? Do you understand that He died for you? He has given you new life through His death. We have to understand today that, that yes, Satan is Roman. He, he's trying to seek and find. He's trying to devour. He's trying to destroy every Christian in here today. It might be a, a person in here today that's unsaved. Maybe you have never called on Jesus Christ. Maybe the devil is lying to you today. Maybe he is telling you that you are worthless here today and that you are never mounting nothing, but that's a lie from the old foe. Amen. Amen. He wants you to stay dumb here today. He wants you to be deaf. He wants you to be uh, bound here today so you can't hear this message. Maybe it's somebody here today that had all kind of stuff come upon you and maybe you're sitting here today and you can't even hear God's Word because you are so, so tied down. I pray here today that God's Word will convict, amen, that it will stir hearts up today, will open minds and bring us to the savor and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let me take us to a word in prayer before we get started. Amen. Dear Father God, Lord, I just pray here today that your people will would just acknowledge who you are and what you have done and how important it is to depend on you. Lord, I pray for a lost soul here today that will find you, Jesus, that, that you will uh, knock on that door and you will convict that heart and, and just have them stand up, Lord, and say, Jesus, I need you. Lord, we just thank you for your presence here today. Lord, we thank you for the people you have sent here today. And Lord, we just pray that you give me the wisdom and the clarity to speak your word here today. And Lord, we thank You, we praise You, and we adore You, Lord, and we give You all the glory in everything we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I got a few things here today, but the topic is basically overcomer. But the lesson to these three series is seven ways to be an overcomer according to the Bible. And man, it's got some scriptures, so we're going to take us another gospel trip here today. Now, I've got three series, so I, I'm not going to rush this. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do His job here today, and I'm just going to do what I can, and, and then we'll start over next week, and then we'll start the next week after. So we're going to take our time on this because I truly believe it's Christians in this world that is suffering, amen. And you need to know that just because you suffer on this world don't mean that it's going to be forever. That one day when we close our eyes or Jesus Christ comes back, we're going to have beautiful happiness. Amen. We're going to have true worship. We're going to be in a righteous land that Christ has prepared for us. But it goes on to say, did you know that as Christians, God wants you to be an overcomer in every situation? See, this is a hard one to grasp sometimes because as, me, as like me and as you, Maybe we have been fighting a battle for years. And, and maybe, maybe we wanted to give up. And, and maybe we question God and say, God, you know, I've been praying to you every night, every day for, say, 10 years. And God, I just feel like it's no end to this suffering. But it is an end. Amen. Jesus Christ's death is your solution. He has gone before you and he has died to give you life, everlasting life with Him forever and ever. So no matter what you go through, what suffering, what sickness, what depression, what elements that's in this world that's holding you down, you don't have to worry about that because the work has already been done at the cross. And that's what we need not to forget here today. It also says, He wants you to rule and reign in life as a king. Amen? He, he wants you to be happy in this life he wants you to be grounded. He wants you to be steadfast. He wants you to persevere through anything of this world. He does not want us bounded down by sickness. Even though, yes, in these human bodies, we're going to face sickness. Everybody here will face sickness and death one day. But that does not mean that, that we have to take our focus off of Christ just because we're going through something. And when we learn to work through our struggles and learn how to get through our struggles through Christ, then we're going to find our struggles a whole lot easier to, to do. And I want to take us to Romans 5, 17. And I want to read this scripture right here. And we're going to talk a little bit more. And we're going to go to a scripture and so on and so on. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, 
much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So when they gave these scriptures to, to the little sentences, and then I started seeing scripture after scripture after scripture, and when I started to study this and, and I started to look at it, I said, wow, I've missed the mark. Yes, I have missed the mark. Because a lot of times, the, the gifts and the things that God has gave me, I hadn't been using it like I should through a struggle. And it took me to understand that, look, it ain't going to get no better, Jamie. You might as well face it, and you better use what God has given you to get through this storm. And when I gave up in that storm, not give up on the fight, but I give up on myself wearing, and I put it in God's hands, I found out that God was the leader, and He had the reins, amen? But, but when I was sitting there, when I was having pity parties, and I was worrying, the devil had the reins on me because he was making me think this and think that and do this and do that. He was putting things in my head that weren't true. And I was so broken at the time of that struggle that I started to believe his lies. Y'all ever been like that sometimes in life? Amen. Get a praise God on that one. God has actually put all things under your feet and made you an overcomer in the world. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 8, 6. Psalms 8, 6. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet. Amen? So you see how these scriptures are going along and helping you to understand what an overcomer is and make you realize that, yes, you can be an overcomer today. And the reason you can do that is because of the work of Jesus Christ. But also, you need to tell Satan today that you have a much bigger power, the Lord Jesus Christ, that's fighting your battle here today. You need to let the foe know that it's not you anymore that's fighting the battle, but it's Christ who's fighting the battle. That's what so many people fall short at. They're still trying to fight their own battles. And God has given us the Holy Spirit to live and dwell in us to help us fight the battle. Amen? Let's take it on over down here. And this is going to match up with this. And this is 1 John 5.5. 5. 1 John 5.5. 5. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? Amen? I want everybody to know here today that, that Jesus Christ is real. Real. And you have to, if you're a believer here today, you have to believe that He is the Son of God. Amen? That He did die for you. And He did pay a ransom for your life. Amen? Amen. The only way that you can be an overcomer, you, you have to believe in what Jesus Christ did for you. And what He will continue to do for you. So why is it so often that Christians are not overcoming? Amen? I want you to think of that for a second. And listen to what it goes on to say. It says, perhaps we are not using the tools God has given us to be an overcomer. All right. Praise God. All right. We all here have those tools whether you realize it or not. God has given us all those tools through His Son, Jesus Christ, to have a better life. And then right now, we're getting ready to go and look at seven ways. And this is the series, but it's going to take us about three weeks to get over it. But it's seven ways to know how to be an overcomer through the Bible. The first one says, know who you are. God says you are an overcomer if you don't know this or believe this reality. You won't experience it knowing that you are an overcomer in the first step. But listen, it says believe who God says you are. Believe that you will overcome in every situation. Life throws you. Amen? See, all of us here today, I had told you that every one of us, if you haven't gone through a situation, and if you haven't gone through struggles, it's coming. 
And I will be lying to you if I told you today that your life will be perfect and nothing would ever happen. But even Jesus went through struggles as His walk is taking on flesh. Amen? And I think about, I think about the love God must have had for His people. I think about God giving His Son and, and, and sending Him to the cross and, and being a sacrifice for you and I. Do you realize today how many times I have brought up the cross? Because I want it to get embedded in somebody's heart today to stop fighting on your own strength, but depend on Jesus Christ and call Him in your heart. I cannot make anybody be saved today. I don't have that power, but I know one, amen, who does. I know one that's in the saving business here today that can set you up on a solid rock and make you see wonders here today. We never need to forget how bad or how hard this world is. And, and so many people think because they listen to the news and they listen to the powerful people that our world is being destroyed and dwindling down and that we are in a crisis. Yes, our world is falling down. It's because that they have taken the Word of God out of everything. That they don't want God mentioned in nowhere. They don't want to hear the name Jesus Christ. But I will tell you this today. Every knee will bow sometime or another. When Jesus comes through those skies, your money, your power, your nothing is going to help you get out of the situation. Because it takes an overcomer to get to heaven, amen. It takes an overcomer to get through struggles. It takes an overcomer to get through this world and the ways of this world. And if you're not an overcoming, then you're missing the mark here today. Overcomer. Listen to what the Marion's or Webster Dictionary says that a overcomer is. It's a person who overcomes something. One who succeeds in dealing with or um, gaining comfort of some problem or difficulty. In other words, when you face a difficulty, when you face a trial, you are a overcomer because you learn how to get through that struggle. You learn to depend on Jesus Christ to make things happen in your life. You learn to depend on His power to gain you through this life. And so many times we get so bearded down, we get so disgusted that we forget the power that Christ has. And then I think about my drug addiction, and I think about how hard and what I faced and what I went through and the things I've done. And I think about that at the very end when I decided to surrender my life to Christ, that's when the work began in my life. That's where I didn't look back no more. That all I wanted to do was use uh, my drug addiction to help another brother or sister, Amen. to lead them to Christ through my bad, my bad standards. A lot of people say, well, how can you tell? I don't want to tell nobody I was a drug addict, I was an alcoholic. I don't want nobody to know. But do you realize where you're failing at today when God has delivered you from something and He has made you whole and He has cleaned you up the mighty testimony that you can use to shine in this world? All the people that you can reach that a pastor can't because of your past. Don't let your past interrupt your future. But let what Christ can do to change the future. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Amen. It goes on to say, because you are a child of God, the victory is always yours. Everything you need for this life is within you. And I want to take us to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1.3 3. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and, and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Praise God. Now I want you to understand here tonight that it's never you and it's not you, but it's all His power because of what He has done to get us to this point. And we need to realize today that we need to use these lives to please Christ and to show Christ in this dying world. 
And if we're not doing that, then we're not being an overcomer. We're not pleasing God because we're still living our life the way we want to live it. We have no concern of the repetition or, or, or reproach that is bringing Christ through our lives. Now, anybody today that calls yourself a true born-again Christian, you should want to live a better life. You should want to show Christ like somebody looking in a mirror. Not that you and I can be Christ, but we can show, try to live like Christ. Amen? People need to see Christ in everything you do. And it's a big demand for that today because look how big this world is. Look at the millions and millions of people that's on our planet today and all the eyes that's watching the body of Christ. All those eyes that's watching you. Maybe it's somebody watching you that's on their way to salvation, but they ain't quite got there. And maybe, maybe you have sowed a seed to that person and you have given them the gospel of Jesus Christ. But now they're watching you to see how you handle situations to be a overcomer. Maybe some things that you have done that's not very pleasing to God, but it, it really turns somebody else off in your life from um, watching you be a Christian. So we need to understand today that God has graciously gave us a true miracle. His Son, Jesus Christ. Nobody can ever give you what God has given you. That's because God's grace, His merciful love, amen, amen, that He saw fit for us to stay out of that place called hell, but to have us in heaven with Him and to reign for eternity, forever. That's a long time. The other one right here, number two, and this is a good one right here because this is something I believe everybody struggles with. It says, stay intimate with God. Amen? Y'all that are married here today or you have a relationship, you try to do the best you can to please your other half, right? right? You try to do what you can to have them fed, to have clothes on their back, to have a nice bed, a nice house to live in. You try to make everything as comfortable as you can so the two of you can enjoy life, right? Yeah. And be comfortable. But we need to get in that same fashion with our God. And we need to have the intimacy that, that we have with our family, but ten times greater with God. Amen. Because He can be a father that you've never had. Amen. We have an earthly father, but it's something about our uh, heavenly father is something like you never had. I'm gonna, thank you. I want to go to Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. Now, I love this scripture right here. Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumstance nor uncircumstance avails anything, but faith working through love. I want you to understand love today. We already know that Christ showed love towards us on the cross. But what are we showing love to? Are we loving our brothers and sisters today? Are we judging our brothers and sisters? Are we being the true Christ here today that can show Christ to somebody, brother of love, sister of love? When somebody's hurt, when somebody has failed, when somebody has sinned, are we shooting them in the foot or are we picking them up and walking them? What's your definition of love here today? I want to tell you why God has blessed this ministry right here today. It's not because of Jamie, Bobby, or anybody in here. It does not have nothing to do. The only thing we did was obey the Lord. And we went and done what the Lord called us to do. But I'll tell you this. Every Christian needs to have a big heart and a loving heart. If you're here today and you say, Jesus, I love you with all my heart. But how can you love him when you don't love your neighbor? So I want to tell you how Satan works today. If you got any unforgiveness towards a brother and sister in your life, and you're holding on to that, that's how you abound with them reigns of Satan. Because if you can't say, I forgive you and move on with your life, you'll never be happy. It could be a church person here today, maybe two church people that has had a falling out. And maybe you, you, you uh, make time to come to church, but just maybe you feel like you don't want to be around that person because of unforgiveness, amen? And if you hold on to that unforgiveness, it's going to make you matter and matter and matter. You get to where all you think about is being mad. 
And ha half the times you're mad for nothing because once you go ask for forgiveness to for that person, most of the times they'll put their arms around you and say, I'm so sorry too. So we have to understand today, before we can be an overcomer, we have to get rid of all this stuff in our house. And we need to learn to forgive, forget, and move on. Y'all think about Christ, how he must feel. You know, we, we get a little upset with our friends because of some situation or some, let's face it, some crazy. It shouldn't have been mad to start with. But how do you think Jesus feels? When he bore his life to that cross and he see his children acting up and going against him and not acknowledging him. And I want that to sink in here today because I fall short and I'm guilty as well. I'm not pointing the fingers. I point the finger back at me. How can we say we hate our neighbor and that we love Jesus? Because we have to get that hate out of our heart because that's what it is. It's hate. And that hate is the reason our world is falling through now. It's because of hate. It's because of greediness. Everybody wants to be number one. But we need to realize today that there's only one number one, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. But under the Galatians 5, 6, it says, God wants your heart. He wants to know you and become involved in your every detail of your life. He wants you to make him part of everything. How do y'all feel when you have a group of friends and, and four of them decided to go somewhere and they didn't call the other two and y'all find out two days later that they went on a vacation? It hurts you, don't it? So we need to make Jesus Christ a part of everything in our life. Have him involved in everything in our life, in every situation. He wants to be that friend that sticks closer than a brother. You know how it feels to have a best friend. Y'all have grew up together and you trust one another. You can even think of what the other one's going to think. Well, Christ wants to be that part too. He wants to be closer than a brother. He wants to be with you day in and out. And he wants you to take him everywhere. Proverbs 18, 24. Proverbs 18, 24. And that goes on to say, A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen? And we all know who that is. But I like what this says. You know I told you that if you have friends and you're not speaking or because of some crazy. Listen, I, I love this. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. So how can any of us have friends if we're not friendly or we're not loving or we're not going towards that other person? But it says, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Praise God we have that friend here today. Thank God that we have that promise. Amen. He wants to be the father you never had. Amen. And I know all of us has got a father. And I know maybe today somebody's not getting along with their father. Maybe it's been things in the past that's caused that. But we have a Father that loves us here today no matter what. And we need to make sure today that we are fully repentant here today, that we are giving our sins to Christ. And the word repent means to what? Turn away, right? And listen right here. Believe that Jesus has done. Believe what Jesus has done. And I want to go to Revelations 12, 11. Revelations 12, 11. All right, here we go. And listen to this real good. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. I'm going to tell you something. When the Holy Spirit moves, y'all, you can make your hair stand up. It, it, it's goosebumps up here. And I'm thinking, what my Lord and Savior has did for this old rotten sinner up here, what he has did for you, and we're still not thankful here today. Come on, y'all. We need to wake up here today. We need to realize what Christ has done for us today. We need to give him a shout today, praise God. I think about all those times that I rejected Christ, and I think about all those times in my addiction that I was near death and just. I just, 
I just don't understand sometimes in this human mind how God can love me. How God can see a, a drug addict and, and say, I want his life. I want to be a father to him. I want to have an intimacy with him. And I think about all the things that, that, that I have done to disgrace him. And, and But praise God, he gave me a chance. He, he had me, he, he crushed me, he, he pushed me on the floor, and he made it where I had to believe in him because I couldn't see no other truth. But the only thing I could do was to look up, look up in my addiction. And that's where I found Christ at, at a rehab, amen? I found him at the bottom of a floor, at the worst part of my life. So yes, I thank God today for his love, his kindness, and his mercy. Thank God for that. Thank God for Him never giving up on His people. And I think about the world. I, I really think about the world. And I think about a lot of churches in America that won't accept a drug addict through to come, come through the door. And if they do come through, they are made to sit in the back somewhere and they can't be seen and they, they don't want nobody to know that that person's at their church. That's shameful here today because the Lord's house is for sick and sinners, amen. It ain't a country club here today. It's not a place to just come sit. It's for lost souls looking for Jesus Christ. Praise God. And I think that's why God has blessed this ministry here today. Because we have opened our doors up to anybody, amen. No matter what your condition is. A lot of people will come in that door and say, look, I'm ashamed. I'm a drug addict. I have ruined my life. My other church don't want me around. My family don't want me around. And I would look at them and say, you're welcome here in God's house, praise God. You're welcome here. So, so many people in the world are too busy preaching people to hell instead of preaching them to heaven. Amen. Praise God. And I'm not saying nothing. You might get me wrong and take me wrong up here. I'm not saying that's how churches are. But I do know this through testimony. It's a lot of people in churches that has that judgmental thinking. Yes, or what are you going to do, Pastor, if they come in and steal our pots and pans or take our hubcaps or rob our car? Lord, I hear all these things sometimes. But what are we going to do? Let them take it. But this is a house for sinners, Amen. Let them come in. Let's step back. Let's watch Jesus work in their life. I will tell you this. Through this Tuesday night ministry we have of drug addiction, I've seen broken, battered people come through that door. But praise God, 80% of them people are sitting in this church today. Done changed their life and done found Jesus Christ. And they are living their life like they need to live. Amen. And the other percentage, we're not going to give up on them. We're going to keep praying that one day that they will get the concept of Jesus Christ and come back through that door. And we're going to have our arms open and welcome, praise God. I've already been to Romans 5, 17, so I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to start on number four right here. And uh, we'll finish this next Sunday and the next Sunday. And however long... The Holy Spirit wants us to move. I tell you what, let's, uh, I want to just stop today because I don't want to get into four and then we miss half the beginning next week or skip something. But next week is going to be on the act of truth of the word. Next week, we're going to get into how important it is for the word to be in your heart and for that word to take root and what it really means to know the word and use the word in your life. And then we got, uh, we've got uh, the next one. It's going to be staying in faith. That's going to be talking about how firm we need to be with our faith. And uh, make sure we got the shield of armor on and that we are living our life according to Christ. And it's just going to be good on and good on. I thank you all today for your attendance. I thank God for His work and power here today. I thank God to see people here that I hadn't seen in a while. And I thank God for all our visitors and our people that come every Sunday. Praise God. Yeah. I don't think by any chance
All right, y'all, just want to give y'all a little testimony, Shannon, to share with us about uh, 
How many of y'all go through the why me's? You ever been through the why me's, the pity parties and stuff like this? Um, Shannon was saying somebody approached her last Saturday in Oxford. And, uh, you know, they was having a lot of health issues and stuff like that, a lot of stuff going on in their life, and they just couldn't understand why me, why me. You know, just they just was giving themselves a big party and stuff, and as they worked their way through the line and stuff, driving up to get the supplies and stuff, and that's just a man in a wheelchair, no legs, and serving God. So then they thought that that problems didn't matter that much. So y'all remember that, you know, I just want to let y'all know uh, Tuesday night meeting. So some of y'all, a lot of y'all's coming, but it's really growing on Tuesday night. Our little church is growing. I mean, it's not going to be long. If God keep blessing us, we're going to have to make a bigger sanctuary. But I want to ask y'all something. How many of y'all have overcame something? Have you overcame six? All right. Woo. Tell you what, I love the Lord. That's right. The Spirit's here. You can feel Him moving, or you can just sit there and let Him, let Him in. You know, we. I take His presence. I take His presence. I tell you what. I tell you what I want to do. This Saturday at the giveaway, I would love to have a full, as many as possible can show up down there. And before we, it's better. I need you to lead this now. We're going to bring the little the speaker we used to carry out on portable. And we before we do our giveaway, we're going to do that song. I need Buddy to lead it. And I need, look, I, I, I'm going to be right there with Buddy. I might, you know, but let's y'all get there. Let's get there at 9 o'clock. Let's get prayed up. I promise you, when you get there, people is already waiting. But let's get everybody together and let's show who we serve. And that's God Almighty. I'm so thankful for Buddy and David and stuff. Like I said, you got a long journey. You got a lot of people in this room who can help you. So get their phone numbers. Shannon? Huh? Let's try to leave here by 20 minutes to 9, okay? So we get to Lewisburg. It ain't going to start at 10, but it will start early because there's always people lined up. But let's get together. Let's get down there and let's sing that song. Let's put smiles on our faces and let's love those people that come through them doors, okay? If you can't make it, please pray for us. Any other, any other announcements, anything? Hey, y'all, let's give Jamie a hand. You know, for all them years, the devil thought he had him. And God was just sitting back laughing. He said, man, I, I got a plan for him. I got a plan. And look at, I think about the, I ain't talking about hundreds. I'm talking about tens of thousands of people we have come in contact with because of a lifestyle he chose to, to live. And God delivered it, and he overcame it. And look at the people he's he has touched. And like I said, God is just getting started, y'all. I'm telling you. I've seen God work in mighty, mighty ways. And like I said, I, and I love him. And our little church is growing. Like I said, Tuesday night, we are averaging about 60 people. If you can't, ain't got nothing to do, come out on Tuesday night, pray with people, sit in. Because it ain't many people that's not affected by drugs and alcohol. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we just thank you so much that you're the ultimate overcomer. Lord, you hung on that cross. You took a punishment that was made for us, Lord. Lord, you did it willingly. Never spoke a word. You just said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord God, I pray if there's someone in this house right now that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that you will get a hold of that heart. Lord, if it takes you putting them on that back and looking up, if that's what it takes, Lord, spare their life but save that soul, Lord. Lord God, thank you for all the people that you have put in our uh, presence today, Lord. Lord, I know some probably made a great effort to get here, Lord. They didn't want to be here, Lord. I pray they live, that they'll re go out revived, Lord. Fill with your spirit, Lord. Lord God, thank you for what you're doing in Grace Ministries, Lord. Give us the strength to be humble that we may be used. Lord God, bring us together like never before that we go out into these communities, that we would tell people about you. And more importantly, Lord, we will show people about you. 
And they were asked, say, why do you do the things you do? And we can say, because of God Almighty. Lord God, we pray for each and every person in this room. Lord, give them strength. Lord, give Buddy, give David strength, Lord, in the, the days to come that just like never before they feel your presence. Lord God, there's other people in this room that got unspoken requests, Lord, that's going through heartaches and that only you and them know, Lord. Lord, I pray your blessings upon them, Lord. Give them the peace, the comfort that only you can give. Lord God, thank you for this little church. Lord, just let us grow, Lord. Let us grow not only in uh, souls for you, Lord, but let this church grow in uh, physical bodies that we can do more and more for you, Lord. Lord, guide us, direct us, keep us in your will, Lord, that everything we do give you praise, honor, and glory. And everyone say it. Amen. Amen.